Hello, I'm Jeff Groff, Winter Tour's estate historian. And today I'm going to talk to you a bit about some Winter Tour weddings. This is the 1938 marriage of Pauline Louise DuPont, the eldest daughter of H.F. and Ruth DuPont. But first I'm going to talk about a wedding that did not happen at Winter Tour, but was very significant for the history of the family. That was when Colonel Henry Algernon DuPont, Civil War hero, successful businessman, and someone who would become senator from Delaware, married a New York socialite, Pauline Foster. It was a very grand wedding in New York City in 1874. They had met in Gilded Age, Newport, Rhode Island. You see Pauline's wedding portrait on the right, wearing the very elaborate dress, which cost nearly $375, quite a large sum for that time. After their marriage, they traveled throughout the social capitals of Europe for nearly a year, acquiring a variety of things to furnish their home in Delaware. And their home would be winter tour. The property had been purchased by H.A.'s father, General Henry DuPont, from his brother-in-law's Antoine Bitterman's estate. They began some improvements, uh, some small changes, and in 1876 moved into the house, where their two children, Louise and Henry Francis, would grow up. In 1884, they expanded the house even more, uh, making it very fashionable for that time period. And you see this image here, how it would have appeared after the expansion. But the first wedding I am going to talk about is that of Louise DuPont's. She married a Boston Brahmin, Frank Crowninshield, uh, whose family were very successful merchants uh, involved in the China trade. They had met in Marblehead, Massachusetts, where Frank Crown and Shield's family had their summer house. And just next door was the summer residence of Louise's DuPont grandmother uh, on Peach's Point in Marblehead. Here you see the wedding portrait photograph uh, with the wedding party. Um, Louise had three of her cousins as her attendants, and then her very good friend, Bertha Bartlett, who you see to her right, who would become Bertha Bankhart and a very close friend of HF and Ruth DuPont's. I always like this photograph because of the additional attendant in the foreground. That's one of Henry Francis DuPont's fox terriers, who's kind of uh, crashed the, the wedding party there, but very appropriate because Frank and Louise Crown and Shield loved pets, particularly dogs, and were often surrounded by them. Well, the big wedding for Winter Tour in many ways was that in 1916 of Ruth Wales to Henry Francis DuPont. In October, we're going to be opening an exhibit called Lady of the House, Ruth Wales DuPont, where we're really going to look at Ruth, a very accomplished musician, a wonderful hostess, and so uh, good at organizing large house parties. In that exhibit, we have a recreation of her wedding dress, which you see there on the left. Well, this was also a big society wedding. The newspapers reported at length about the guests who attended uh, and also the over 500 wedding presents. Ruth was related to the Vanderbilt family. Her neighbors in Hyde Park were the Roosevelts. So of course, this made the news. The uh, counts also talked about the diamond tiara that H.F. gave to Ruth. I think an exaggeration. It was probably more of a hair comb that did have a lot of diamonds on it, so still quite nice. In 1931, the large addition was uh, completed at Winter Tour in the spring the family moved in. Uh, with all of these areas, formal gardens, terraces, all the indoor spaces for entertaining, the large swimming pool, it would become the setting for country house parties and special occasions uh, in the life of the family, debutante parties, anniversary parties, and of course, wedding reception. 
The first wedding I'll talk about is Pauline Louise, the eldest daughters, who married Alfred Harrison. He was a Philadelphian from a well-known family uh, who were very involved in sugar refining uh, and also connections to railroads. Here you see them on their wedding day leaving Christ Church, Christiana 100, near Wintertour. He was an attorney who would practice in New York City and they would live in, in New York and had a weekend and summer house out in Oyster Bay. Alfred's parents were good friends of H.F. and Ruth DuPont, so it made it a very happy occasion in so many ways. Now, H.F. DuPont always wanted to be on top of every last detail. He loved organizing things, and so for months he'd been planning this, this January wedding down to every last detail. He arranged for trains, private trains, to take guests from New York and from Washington bring them to Wilmington. There they would be met and transported to Christ Church, then on to the reception, then back to the train station at the end. Over 800 people were attending this wedding. But the use of private trains uh, had precedent. When Ruth Wales and HF were married in 1916, private trains were arranged that went from New York City up to Hyde Park and then back. Here's an image of Christ Church uh, on that wedding day. H.F. DuPont, not surprisingly, had planned all the flowers, uh, the use of foliage and greenery to create a very special setting. Now back at the house, he had to do a lot of shifting and planning. With 800 guests uh, and winter time, he had to use the indoor spaces for coats, for uh, the buffet, for cocktails, and for receiving them. So his priceless antiques, like those in the Chinese parlor, were moved into other areas of the house for storage. And the Chinese parlor would become the place for the receiving line. He was also concerned about the Chinese wallpaper, the late 18th century hand-painted wallpaper. So he placed uh, containers and vases of flowers around the edge of the room to keep people from getting too close to it. You see the image on the left of the conservatory set up with a large bar for serving, of course, champagne uh, and cocktails and to his staff. It turned out to be a fairly mild day uh, for January, so people were able to spill out onto the terraces around the conservatory. For the Yuletide tour in 2010, we recreated uh, that wedding reception. And the color photographs you'll see here come from that tour. It was sort of a high afternoon tea for the reception. Uh, they had ham and biscuits, sweetbread cutlets, hot consomme, it was January, tea sandwiches, and then for desserts, a whole wide variety of, of mini cakes of course, coffee and tea and champagne. For the bridal party, uh, the DuPont dining room had been set up so they could enjoy a more leisurely uh, seated meal. Here you see again H.F. DuPont on top of all the details of the flowers on the table, the candlesticks, the placemats, and other features to make it a very special occasion for Pauline Louise Alfred and their special. Of course, there was music for dancing. The orchestra was Joe Moss and his society orchestra brought down from New York City. And interestingly, they'd also played at the 1935 debutante party for Paul. In March of 1947, uh, the youngest daughter, Ruth Ellen, married George Lord of New York City, another prominent uh, New Yorker uh, to come into the family, but with a slightly different career path. He decided he wanted to go into academics, and at the time of their wedding, he was studying at Yale. He would go on to become a prominent professor there of English literature. Like the Harrisons, the Lords, uh, his parents, were friends of H.F. and Ruth Dupont's. Well, the wedding nearly didn't happen or nearly had to be postponed. 
Ruth was up in New Haven uh, going over the house that they'd be moving into, looking at the details there, then came back down to New York City by train. It was a rainy afternoon, and when she arrived in New York, she got a taxi cab to take her to her Park Avenue apartment. But along the way, the taxi was hit by a car or a truck that had slid into it, and Ruth was actually thrown from the cab and injured. She was in the hospital for five days, so they weren't certain if the wedding could go on, but it was able to. Uh, Ruth later, though, did talk about uh, during the wedding, she was not feeling her best and actually had to wear a fair bit of makeup on her face to cover some bruises and cuts. Like the reception for her older sister, uh, antiques were cleared out of uh, the principal rooms. People were able to enjoy a buffet with chicken salad, tea sandwiches, fruit salads, mini cakes, and of course, pl plentiful champagne, and then visit with each other in different rooms. Uh, in some rooms, tables were set up, folding chairs covered with uh, attractive canvas slip covers to make it more comfortable. And of course, there was music for dancing. What would be a better place for throwing a bridal bouquet than Montmorency stairs at Wintertour? And here you see Ruth tossing the bouquet to the assembled guests below. Well, the tradition of weddings at Wintertour uh, started to uh, continue in later years. And Despite a, high, a hiatus in recent months, is starting again here at Winter Tour. Here you see some photographs from several years ago, uh, one at the reflecting pool and one a tent near the visitor center where weddings uh, are held and create special memories for people who can enjoy them in the tradition of the DuPont family. Well, I hope you enjoyed this glimpse into weddings at Winter Tour, and we'll look forward to seeing you back here soon.